This is Janet Bartholomew of Placentia, California. Janet says women love to watch her at work, but that men hate it. If you think you're puzzled, wait till she meets the panel on... What's My Line? <laughs> and now let's meet this week's panel, Suki Sam! Lana Valeri! Bert Parks! Harley Francis! And the host of What's My Line, Larry Wolf! Yes, sir. What'd you say? There. No. Huh? I just want to We're having a row. We're having a on Another one? Oh, listen. I just want to tell all my friends out in L.A. that I have uh, it's three shows tonight <laughs> and three shows tomorrow night at the Playboy Club at Century Plaza. You must be exhausted. At, uh, I certainly... <laughs> How can you do that many shows a night? Well, this, when you lead a clean life, you can do that. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, just so that you get a little rest, I suggest now that you put on your blindfolds, panel. Well, I was kidding. You really do <laughs> Yes, we're really going to start the show with our blindfolds on. Okay. And I will explain why in just a minute. Are they all in place? Yes. Now, yes, would our are. first challenger enter and sign in, please? Robert Fasoto. Where are you from? New York. Panel, you are blindfolded because Robert Pasoto is dressed in the clothes in which he works. And in his case, that would be a git, a, a git dead away. <laughs> a dead giveaway. We'll show the audience what his line is. And now let's begin with Donna Valeri. Um, well, let me think now. If it was a dead giveaway, um, is it... Is it something to do with entertainment, your line? Yes. Um, do you wear, as well as a, a sort of something, uh, an outfit, do you wear makeup on your face? Besides, I mean, not just plain old pancake, I mean, or, ornate makeup, if there is such a thing. No. One oh. down, nine to go, Bert. Uh, because th this special uh, thing that you're wearing, uh, would it be identified with a hamburger chain? <laughs> no. Oh. Two down, eight. I thought it was Arlene. Ronnie McDonald, but right. I guess not. Marlene? Uh, it is a costume that we would, on the panel, we would immediately recognize. Right. Uh, is it uh, an ethnic costume of any kind? Yes. Oh. Do you represent a country? Therefore, in this costume? Uh, you mean, uh, is he a representative actually of that country, the government, and like that? Mm. No, I mean, would his, is his garb indicative of the country that he represents? Yes. Yes. Uh, is it a... Uh, is it musical in any way? Yes. Are you, you wearing a grass skirt? No. Three out seven to go, Supi. It was said it was musical? Uh, she, well, I, I understood the question to mean was... Does, uh, the, does the costume represent anything musical? Ah, does it, I'm sorry, I should have given you a no on that, Arlene. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, Supi. All right, now, is this what we're looking for, a, like a famous trademark of a famous product? No. That I know of. Four down and six to go. Um, can, can I hear the gentleman's name again? Pesotto. Aha. Pesotto. <laughs> well, it uh, sounds Italian, so maybe he's dressed like a Roman gladiator. No. That's it, all right. Five down and five to go back. But you say <laughs> it does have an ethnic background. Does it also have a religious background? No. Oh. Six down and four to go, Arlene. The name is Italian, but does the costume belie the name? You are name? assuming the name is Italian. Oh. 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 Oh, we're so assuming it. What else could it sound like? Could you spell it? P-S-O-T-T-O. Pesoto. Oh, that sounds P-O? P-S-O-T-T-O. Oh, oh Soto. Soto. That's not Italian. That's no. a car. I As used to own a Pesoto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Why did they laugh when I said grass skirt? Though? Now that's a tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a skirt that you're wearing? Uh, in that family. Well, is it scotch? Yes. Oh. He's wearing a scotch. Uh, skirt. Johnny Walker label. Um, <laughs> is it? Uh, but there's nothing musical. You don't play the bagpipes. Uh, that is incorrect. What? You do play the bagpipes? Uh, Soupy? You play what? the bagpipes? Oh, very good, Soupy. You did. <laughs> He said it backwards. He guessed that too fast. Oh, yeah. He plays the bagpipes. Isn't that a terrific he outfit that he's got? Oh, that's my, I'd love where to see you, the whole thing. Can he stand up? In a minute, he yeah. will. Yes. Bob, where do you play? Well, I, I often play in New York on Fifth Avenue in the street. Do the police <laughs> bother you? Well, they bother me, but I pick up a little business here and there. What's the reaction of people uh, when you pet? Well, the most amusing reaction is with the girls. I often get pinched on the subway, or I find the ladies bunched up on the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, would you, would you explain to us, uh, before he plays the pipes, which is really marvelous, would you explain to us exactly what your costume is? Well, I think uh, people would like to see it better. That's you? what I mean. If, right. you, would, if you would go to the center and just point out each oh, of the things. Isn't that great? That's the sporran, right? Well, that's the sporran. <clears throat> and uh, this is a, sort of a, a purse. And a Gaelic word for sporran is purse. And this is the back of it here. It's not very useful anymore. So it's used just to keep us warm now, I guess. But down here. <laughs> Down here we have what we call the skein do, the little black knife, and it really was a little black thing because they, they used it on their enemies and whatever. And a lot of these things have become just decorative things. The kilt pin, the dirk with the Highland mess kit in it, and a little wee knifey comes out of there. Ooh. And if you know, we carried our own table setting. And the short sword here, which is probably derived from the Roman short sword. And then we have the claymore, which is known as the... Uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> basket hilted sword or the swashbuckling uh, the pirates use these and I can go on and on as you can see this is there here it is <laughs> is that ostrich your hat well this is an ostrich feather bonnet yes and it's made like a bird cage now here are the pipes well very good hi I'll uh, grace you with a couple of <clears throat> tunes amazing wonderful. grace and Scotland the brave all right wonderful could you go up there where there's a little light Absolutely. and he's gonna uh, grace us with Scotland the brave and amazing grace For those of you whose sets are in black and white, that was a, a red Wallace tartan that he was wearing, and it was really quite beautiful. Mm. I was going to ask you what the clan was. Wallace. Wallace. And now would our next challenger enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Janet Bartholomew. My goodness, you have such a delicate handwriting. Where, oh, where are you from? Placentia, California. Placentia, California. When the work is there, Janet Bartholomew is an actress. Four days a week, however, she does something else for a living. She performs a service. We will show the audience what her line is. <laughs> and let's start with Bert Parks. 
Whatever that service is, it's got to be a most pleasant experience for somebody, right? Yes, yes. Sure it is. <laughs> uh, when you perform the service, uh, are you ever in, in contact with the other person? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. Yes. I mean, uh, by physical contact, you touch them, are you, or you, you, you touch them ever? Do you ever um, touch them? She may in she passing, may, yes. but it isn't really necessary no. to the carrying out of the job. I see. Right. One down and nine to go, Arlene. <laughs> Is there anything instructive in what you do? Uh, yes. Uh, there are some instructions which may pass from her to the other person, but the job is not essentially one of instruction. <laughs> Two right. down and eight to go, Sue. <laughs> Do you ever buy or sell anything? No. Three down and seven to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there go those two lots in Florida, Soupy. You still got them. <laughs> Donna? The service that you perform, do you perform it, is it for one person or is it for a group of people? You can't answer that yes or no. Ah, right. Do you perform it for um, a group of people? Yes. Uh, is it both men and women? Yes. Um, do they benefit physically from your service? Yes. Well, yes and no. Essentially, it isn't uh, for the physical benefit of somebody in the sense that... Yeah, but uh, I meant rather than spiritually. Yeah. Four down and six to go, Bert. <laughs> uh, does this uh, uh, group teaching that you do... That, uh, you no, wait, there's no teaching connected with it. Oh, there's no teaching. It. <laughs> and from time to time, she does it for a group, and time to time, she does it for an individual. I see. Um, I pass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Arlene... Because I keep going back to my original thought, and that's no good. If she doesn't teach them anything, and she does it before a group or an individual, is it in any way... The word before is your word. No, you said it. That's why I, that's why I repeated it. In front of? In front of. No. Before, I thought you said. No, for. Oh, for. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, yeah. and your diction is so lovely. Thank you very much. Um, you she can separate four from four. two right away, for example. <laughs> For a group or an individual, and there's nothing instructive about it, uh, do you show them anything? Yeah. In a manner of speaking. In a manner of speaking, yes. Not yourself, I didn't mean that. No. 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 <laughs> uh, do, you, um, do you need any uh, equipment of any kind? No. Five down and five to go soupy. Does food and drink enter into it? No. Six down and four. You know, would you like to have dinner? <laughs> <laughs> is um, is entertainment involved in it at all? No. Seven there, down, three to go. Bert. Is there anything meditative about what you do? Mm, no. Eight down and two to go. Arlene. We're really up the garden path, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's, you're not uh, even near. Right. i tell you what Do you've you got so far. She has a service and is performed for both men and women, sometimes groups, sometimes singly. Right. Uh, and uh, do you wear anything other than what you're wearing now? Yes. Uh, <laughs> is it less than what you're wearing now? No. Nine down Could and one we have go? a ten-second conference? Why not? <laughs> Because they're not going to get <laughs> this. You've got them. Taxi driver. Would you be in some? Uh, would you be uh, in some form of transportation? Mm, no. Not really. Although from time to time she does take care of something like that. She is a hotel doorman. <laughs> And uh, Janet works at the Universal Sheraton Hotel in Studio City, Hollywood, California. Are you the hotel's only lady doorman? Yes. Uh, what, what are your other duties? What do you do? Well, actually, I park cars, yeah. and I uh, take luggage into the hotel. How long have you been there? Uh, around seven months now. The night you weren't there when I was there. How do the guests no. react? I well, the, the women love it. The women really do. They think it's great. But the men, they, they won't let me lift anything. They won't, uh, they won't let me <laughs> Listen, do nothing. I, I can understand they check in and you say, carry your bags, and the guy said, let her walk. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not from Placentia, California originally, are you? Uh, no, I'm from you're, Los Angeles originally. Are you really? Yes. Is that funny because you have kind of a southwestern accent? Well, listen. I, I, I do. Would like... I'm Italian. You are? Yeah. Well, you're doing a beautiful job. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would just like to ask you one final question. What has Sheraton done for you lately? It's brought me to New York. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you for being with us on West My Life, Johnny. Good luck. You know those, what has Sheraton done for you lately? What has Sheraton, that song? You know that blonde lady that sings that song? That's not that blonde lady singing that song. You know who's singing that song? Donna Valeri. <laughs> I didn't know that. She's her voice. That's really terrific, Donna. Thank you very much. That's so good that why don't you all put on your blindfolds now? Because, uh -oh. Uh -oh. because it's time for the mystery guest. I wish I could get this for once in my life. Well, you may get lucky, because this is a I terrific mystery guest. Are your blindfolds all in place? Hey, yes. Then would our mystery guest enter and sign in, please? Okay, panel, we'll just go one question at a time. Face law prevails. You have about two minutes, and let's start with Arlene Francis. Thank you, mystery guest. Are you, uh, do you sing? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Soupy? But, but he's not a singer. No. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you also a musician? Uh, no, man, no. Donna? Are you a sportsman? Hmm? A sportsman? Mm. Mm -hmm. No, Bert? No? He is not a sportsman. Uh, that, that was a nice uh, round of applause there, Mr. Yes. Guest, you got when you arrived. So obviously the people recognize you instantaneously and are in that right at once. Uh, let me ask you this. Is, would you say that your forte, that you're best recognized as a result of your work on the two television? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Arlene? Is that yes? That's a yes. Yes. Uh, do you appear uh, on a regular series? Uh, uh. I think it's syndicated now. Oh! <laughs> oh, no, you didn't know that. Subi? Have you ever been on this panel? Uh -huh. Is that yes? That's a uh -huh. yes. Donna? Ooh, wait a minute. No? Yeah, 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 no. Um, Ooh, was the series all sort of mystery and Mission Impossible? Is that the series you were in? Mm -hmm. Was that a yes? Mm -hmm. Did you ask if it was a Mission Impossible? Yeah, that was the Bert? series. And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. The answer was yes. Mm -hmm. The answer was yes, it was Mission Impossible. Oh, yeah. oh, I know this young man because I saw him not long ago and oh my goodness gracious, we shook hands. He's a very attractive young man, and his first last name starts with an H. Is that right? No. No. <laughs> Arlene? As an unattractive kid, it starts with an M. Then how about that? <laughs> Arlene? I'm trying to think of the people in Mission Impossible. Is it, uh, uh, are you, uh, uh, are you appearing now in a, in a successful motion picture? Uh-uh. Soupy? No. Well, it can't be anybody, but he is a fine actor and a nice guy. Is it Greg Morris? Yes. No, it's Leonard <laughs> Nimoy. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Leonard oh. Nimoy. <laughs> 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 the last... The last time I was here, it was Greg Morris who said, oh, I know who that is, that's Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, that's right, that's it. <laughs> Greg Morris told us that when he was on that show, his grandmother said that she thought that was terrific that he was on that show. She loved him being on that show because after it was over, he could always get a job as a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> and she Not meant true. It. <laughs> what are you doing in town now? Well, I'm doing some... Um, uh, talk shows, game shows, uh, making some arrangements for a lecture tour that I'm, I'm doing for the second or third year now. I do some college lecture dates and making plans for the summer. I do a lot of summer musicals. And what do you theater. talk about when you go on lecture tours? What do you talk well, about? Well, what they really want to hear about is Star Trek. That's the show. Yeah. And uh, I also did Mission Impossible tour. Yeah. What they really want to hear about is, is Star Trek, and, and uh, I do talk a lot about that, but I try to... Uh, I try to broaden the area a little bit. I talk uh, essentially about science fiction, but in the sense that, that things that used to be considered 
far out or futuristic are really part of our contemporary society today. I, I, I update it frequently and use material from newspapers and magazines to show where we are living in an age where many of our science fiction fantasies of the past have become reality today. When you were a kid, were you a science fiction fan? No, no, I really wasn't. I, uh, I appreciated uh, good science fiction writers like Bradbury and so forth, but I was not really a buff. Uh, during the making of Star Trek, of course, I read more science fiction to kind of get a frame of reference for what it was all about. And each week I read a science fiction script yeah. <laughs> that we were going to shoot. But uh, it's, it's only really more recently that I've become really fascinated with, uh, with the effect of science fiction concepts on our future because the science fiction writers are really the dreamers of our future reality. They seem to be uh, terribly accurate about the kinds of things that, yes. that keep happening. Don't yes, they? yes. Listen, Leonard, thank you for being with us. Thank so much, you, Come back and Great play with us. Great to see you. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more of What's My Line after this message. Listen, we're back, and I didn't realize that Leonard Nimoy's new book is called Will I Think of You? There's a copy of it, and he's done not only the poetry in the book, but the photographs, which are really... Marvelous. His last book was a, was a beauty, and it looks like this one is too. Will I think of you? Leonard Nimoy. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you. <laughs>